Warning, this is an adult-oriented podcast and about really perverse things like communication and consent. If you're under 18 and looking for answers to questions about sex or kink, please visit scarleteen.com. For the Dude Bro listeners, this is nerdy shit. Fuck off. Somebody help that poor submissive! Look, up there in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane? Is that a flogger? Uh, Someone's got to be having a good time. As the kink signal shines brightly in the night sky, we know that there is fuckery afoot. What kind of fucking town is this? No worries, as they've listened to the Gotham press beforehand, so all will be safe, sane, and consensual. Well, that's reassuring. Right? Yeah, but what's the Gotham press? What is the Gotham press, you ask? It's about time you tell us, don't you think? Well, I'll let the Cape Crusaders themselves educate you on that. I like this new chair. It's so... It's so... uh, uh, uh. You are now listening to the world-famous Gotham Press Podcast. Ladies, are we ready? We are ready. We're ready? Green. (laughs) Green, green, green? Green, green, green. Hi. Hi there, Michael Manager. Hi. How you doing? Great. Always great. You're always great? So great. Perfect. So Uh, happy to be here. So happy? Yep. All right. Perfect. Well, micromanager, Hmm. I want to send a special shout out, like I do at the beginning of every episode, to our Patreon supporters. Yay. They're so great, aren't they? (laughs) Yay. Yay. We do enjoy our Patreon supporters. Why? Because they help to keep the lights on. So, so. I'm tearing up here. How many are there now? Shh, don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Daddy. Multiple ones. Multiple ones. Multiple. Yes. All right. Um, so, Micromanager Lala, where can they find us? Uh, check the show notes. Check the show notes. Well, you know, I think that's exactly where they should look. I do, too. Okay. So, what was that phone number? 805-303-11. Seven three. Yay! <laughs> oh yes. We, I was all of a sudden not sure again. <laughs> it's okay. We're all right. So yes, for any sort of contact to the podcast, you can always hit us up with either a voicemail or a text message. And like we said before, any of the locations that we have in our show notes, we're we're always checking. Hey, I'd really like to meet that girl Candy, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure you would. She sounds hot. Yeah, well, and that's naughty. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you call. <laughs> yeah, call so you guys can know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, definitely call Candy. She's in. <laughs> if you call our number, you will meet Candy. That's right. That'll uh, be great. All right. So, just uh, want to give a quick shout out once more to our special sponsors, uh, the amazing, amazing. Paddle makers at J and W Paddles. Yes. <laughs> you, I like how you were like, yes. Yes. <laughs> I've touched their wood. I've handled their wood. It's nice. On uh, more than one occasion. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, to the amazing piercer that filled greedy full of holes. Ow. Thank you, piercings by B. It was hot. Uh, Did you say ow? Yeah, I couldn't watch. Aw. Uh, and to our littles. The amazing pacifier makers at, I'm sorry, adult passy makers at Jack and Ducky Passies. That's right. They're so wonderful. They're glittery and cute and personalized to whoever purchases them. Yes, Mm -hmm. and Greedy probably still needs to fondle one. (laughs) I need a new one. I find the whole fondling a passy odd. Odd? Why would he want to fondle it? Wouldn't he want to suck on it? You would think, but it's greedy. He's already weird. Wait, <laughs> did you say you need a new one? I do. My other one broke. Oh, no. What happened to it? Well, it had a um, a little like plate on the front of it that uh-huh. was like a Mickey Mouse shape with all the Disney villains. Yes. And the ear broke off. <gasps> oh, It no. was my own fault. It happened when I was moving. Oh, but, no. So I need a new one. Well, we will definitely have to get get in contact with Jack and Ducky and be like, yes. hey, we need another. I know a person. <laughs> you know a person. <laughs> I think you know a couple of people. I know a few people. All right. So our first note this time. Have you? Did you play Pokemon Go? Yes. And Ingress. Thank you very much. And Ingress. 
micromanage a lot. Did you play Pokemon Go? I did. You did? Did you play it a lot? Did you enjoy yourself? I enjoyed myself. Uh, the fortresses were too hard for me, so I could never get in there and do those challenges. But I liked running around and trying to collect them. Okay. That was fun. All right. Well, did you know that they have a new game based on the same system? Oh, yes. Yes. For all those Harry Potter nerds. Woo-woo. Hufflepuff. Gryffindor. <laughs> Ravenclaw. We're missing a Slytherin, Slytherin right now. Slytherin, that's right. Do we ever really Heckler. miss Slytherin? Heckler can be Slytherin. Is he? He's evil. Okay. <laughs> he fits. <coughs> Yes, Excuse me. I am already level 9, and I just barely started playing on Friday. I have not even touched the game yet. I have co-workers that are trying to force me into Hufflepuff. Well, that's because Hufflepuff is the best. We have cookies. Like, for real. <laughs> Did you download it onto your phone yet? I have not downloaded it yet. Oh. I, I have not discovered how to... To join a, a class yet. I'm a... A house? A house, yeah. I, I have a, a skill, yeah. the, the animal one. I can't pronounce it at all. The Patronus? No, not no. the Patronus. The, that's, that's what I like. They have different skill things. You have to like go to your um, Ministry of Magic ID card, and I think you can click on something there that lets you pick your house. I haven't seen that yet. But I, I, I am in a skill set. But it, and it's about the animals. Like, it's opening. It, anyway. Yeah, you're further okay. ahead than I got. So, mm. Don't we talk to, about, talk to Greedy about this all the time? I know. I know. I should have been better prepared. This it, is it's fault. okay. It's all right. You, you don't need to worry about it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, as far as the game's concerned, you say it's enjoyable. Is it just like Pokemon Go and all that? It, Do you have to go fight gyms and all that kind of thing? The little bit that I was able to play, the one big thing I noticed was that riding as a passenger, you can't just like click on, it's not a pokey stop anymore, but like the greenhouses and all of those, you can't just click on it as you drive by and play it. As soon as you get out of range, you lose the connection to the, the spot. Oh. Whereas in Pokemon, you could, as long as you were in range when you clicked on it, you could continue playing it. Oh, wow. So that's the big difference that I noticed. But I'd only played it a little bit, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but you, but there's monsters or, or foundables everywhere, and if you click on them as a passenger, you can continue to mm-hmm. to catch it. They'll end up behind you, though. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you could still do your magic wand thing. Okay, so the 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 skill I'm in is magic magizoologist. And I don't think I said that right. Magizoologist? Magizoologist. That's like Newt Scamander. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm all Who about... is a Hufflepuff, by the way. <laughs> That's my expertise. So you get to pick an expertise, but I don't I don't see where you can pick a house. Oh, there it is. Select your Hogwarts house. Yay! Yay! So next is going to be Lala's Magical Beast and where to find them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway. Um, but I love the fact that you can run around and like collect ingredients to make spell... Like potions Ooh. and oh yeah, um, one of my coworkers, actually two of my coworkers, were talking and playing at the same time, and they just figured out apparently that if you shake your phone while you have the potions, that's how you actually can mix up new ones and things like that. That's Why? so cool. Okay, knowledge learned. Yeah, I, again, I haven't even played it. I'm just secondhand information on this. Shake your phone and it gives you access to other potions. Or? Well, what happens is you can mix potions, right? Right. And when you mix a potion uh, after it's been mixed, if you shake your phone, it may give the, the potion a new type of effect. <gasps> oh, I must try that. That's amazing. <laughs> that is very exciting. So the only b- downside to it that I've found so far is there's so many things that you can collect, so many ingredients that you can collect, mm-hmm. and like seeds and water, and there's all these different um, attributes that you can collect to do different things. But your little vault gets full fast, and then they're like, oh, you can get more space if you spend all this gold that you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the gold that you don't have? Right. They want you to spend money to buy more gold, but I'm not doing that. I mm-hmm. refuse to do that. So, Microtransactions for the, what's it called? The completionists. Yeah. Well, that's just kind of the same way that it went in Pokemon Go as well. You could only have so much backpack space. Mm. 
So yeah. you can only hold so many Pokeballs, so many um, lures, and yada, yada, yada. I think I never had too many. I never had to. Oh, never... I, I, I had a, a quite a bit, quite a few. <laughs> I played Ingress way more than I played Pokemon. So, I, But you could have too many keys and stuff in Ingress, I think. Right. So it's all based on the same system. It's yeah. just... I, I knew, different skin on top I knew, of it. Yeah, I was like, a new paint job. <laughs> a lot of those Pokestops and different things that you go to are things that us old school Ingress, Ingress players people. submitted in the first place. Oh, yeah. Greedy told me all about that when Pokemon Go first got mm-hmm. big and I was playing. I used like, to play Ingress with Greedy at uh, a camp out at the beach. We were like fighting over a portal. It was pretty great. <laughs> Speaking nice. of Greedy. Yes. That's who we're missing. We are missing Greedy. Well, I don't know if I'm missing Greedy, but... <gasps> oh, you're missing Greedy. Ah, uh, fine. I miss you, Greedy. <laughs> he had to fly away. Well, he had to fly away to go be in a wedding. I know, and that was awesome. But yeah. we miss him. To, yes, we do. Uh, his, I, I didn't even realize that he was actually a friend of this person, Sergeant Skeletto, that we called out a few episodes back. You called him what? out? Yeah. Uh, well, Gre- well, what happened was, I guess he listened to the podcast, and he got his barrack to listen to the podcast. His whole barrack? <laughs> yes. Wow. So, Staff Sergeant uh, Skeleto. Yeah, Skeleto. That's how you pronounce it. Okay. And if I'm doing you wrong, I apologize. But Staff Sergeant Skeleto uh, had his entire barrack listening to the Gotham Press, which was great. That's fun. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I, t- I told... I was like, you should just all tell all of the people there to just start calling them Skeletor. <laughs> um, I have two of my coworkers now listening to the podcast. Oh? Yes. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. That's it's excellent. Fun. They come in and they're like, loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of coworkers that keep saying that they would like to listen, but just don't. I am eventually going to get them. I'm going to pull them in. Yeah. I will. Suck them in. Whoa. <laughs> well, let's get back to the uh, Harry Potter thing. Back, so, back to the, yeah, back to the Harry Potter thing. Um, past the Wizards Unite, actually. <laughs> In response to us talking about this, I looked up a couple of things for Harry Potter and found out that there is a Harry Potter super fan that broke the world record. That's right. For the largest Harry Potter collection. Do you want to know how many pieces that she collected or do you recall the number? I do not recall the number. 3,686 pieces. Wow. Just where? I don't I don't know, but her most rarest item is a 24 karat gold snitch puzzle from Japan. Oh wow. Only oh 5,000 were made and it took her about 6 months to get it and she refuses to take it apart because it's a really hard puzzle to put back on. <laughs> Corinne? Yeah. Would you have 3,000 pieces of Harry Potter memorabilia if you could? If someone else paid for it, hell yes. <laughs> what, what, let's do this way. If you could have anything from the Harry Potter world in real life, what would you want? Um, like something in, in the Harry Potter universe that I yes. could have or something that's like for sale that I could have? No, no. In the Harry Potter universe. Oh, Felix Felicis, of course. Felix Felicis? Yeah. That's the potion that gives you good luck. Ah. Okay, I can understand that. Or a wand. That'd be cool, too. I was going to say, I would think that a wand would work better because you drink the potion and, yeah, yeah, I've got good luck, but now what? Now everything goes my way. <laughs> but yeah, a wand would be cool. And, you know, like, I don't know, a letter from Hogwarts. <laughs> you just want the letter. But yes. you can get that. I know. You can do that. My son turned 11. Did you? Like last week. And so I had him take the quiz. And he's another Hufflepuff. Aww. So proud. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about you, Lala? What would you like from the Harry Potter world? Uh, one of their cloaks and a wand. Mm-hmm. So cloak and a wand. Yeah. Okay. As long as you don't get the ring in there, too, then we're okay. <laughs> The ring? That is a different series. <laughs> Thank you very much. She. <laughs> the Deathly Hallows. My oh, wait, wait. Oh, that one. Yeah. I'm sorry. The we... Elder Wand and the Cloak of Invisibility oh, and the Resurrection uh, Stone that's in a ring. Yeah. Well, see, when you said ring, my my mind went right to uh, 
Uh, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Thank <laughs> you. That's why I said my precious because I yes. was, didn't. That, that's see, we went to the same yeah, place. That's all right. I'm the weirdo. It's okay. Um, but I actually wasn't talking about an invisible lady cloak. Oh, you just want one of the cool, pretty cloaks. I just want one of their school cloaks. Yeah, because they look nice. You can get those too. Yeah, but they're not going to be magically infused. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's not the same. I want the real one. I want a real one. <laughs> With dust on it from walking to Haggard's. And, oh, wow. You know. <laughs> I mean, if I really wanted something from the Harry Potter world, let's see. I would definitely take a wand. And... No, I think I would be good with just the wand. Yeah. I could do so many things. So many things. You could. But talking about collections, do you collect anything? <laughs> uh... Technically, <laughs> I, it's nothing special, but I, you know how people send you like cards and things for like birthdays and special events, things like that? Yeah. I have for years kept the cards and things that my mother sent me. Aw. Yeah. Aw. I, I, I have them in my room somewhere and... Every time I need to add, I find the stack and add to it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, oh, where's it at now? <laughs> That's got to be huge. It, well, it's not huge, but because I didn't, I haven't done it all my life. Oh, okay. But, you know, when I became an adult, af- what happened was after my mother moved away, I was like, okay. Like, initially, I kind of threw, threw them out thinking, okay, yeah. But then I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to keep these. Yeah. Because... Yeah, they're, nice they're going to be special one day. Mm-hmm. It's nice to kind of look through them again sometimes. Like, oh yeah, I remember that. Sure, yeah. And as people always say, nobody, nobody lasts forever. So right. it's good to have those things, those little memories. Mm-hmm. What about yourself? Collections. I collect sunshines. Sunshines. I, I have a sunshine wall in my living room above my couch. Sunshines from everywhere, Peru, Louisiana. Well, uh, what What do you mean a sunshine? So, like a plaster sunshine, a metal sunshine, like a sun, just a sun, a sun from the sky. Oh, oh okay, a gotcha. It, it took, I was trying to figure out what you meant by a sunshine. At first, I thought like prisms. I thought like a wall of prisms would be freaking awesome. <laughs> oh, but no, okay. no, they're suns. Yeah. Okay. Mexico, everywhere. Everywhere. Nice. Wherever people go on their travels, they bring me back one. So I have a lot of them. So what you're telling me is I have to remember to find a sunshine for you next time I go traveling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I will add it to my wall. All right. And hey, what about you, Corinne? Uh, collecting is kind of like hobbies for me. I have ADD. I don't actually have ADD, but when it comes to collections, I do. Like... When I was a kid, I collected coins, and I still have my coin collection. It's not worth anything, but I have it. Um, I've collected. It's worth something to you. It is. It is. I've collected those little teddy bear pins that are like, they're like I don't know, maybe not even an inch tall, and they're fuzzy, and they come in all different. I, I haven't seen one in years, but I used to have a whole bunch of them. I collect books. I collect stones. I collect tarot cards here lately. Um, let me think. Do you read tarot? Yeah. I do. I really enjoy it. I'm trying to think. I collected miniature tea kettles for a little while, but that didn't really kick off. Hmm. But yeah, I've collected a lot of things. Pins. Okay. I have a lot of pins and, like, buttons. Well, I know um, our former host. Um, wow, which one? <laughs> We've had so many hosts on here. It's weird. Former host? You mean guest? No, no. Former host. Remember way back when when we had five hosts on the show at once? No. That's a lot. I didn't listen back then, but I, I remember. I need, you, I need you to start listening back to that, some of the old episodes, how this started. Okay. They're, They're going to so be the micromanager. You have to know how we how far we've come. All right. They're really hard to hear back then. Yeah. <laughs> but we, had, we were all dealing with a single mic back then. Five people on a single microphone. <laughs> wow. Yes. Like I said, we tried, and we went. Um, it was Fiend, a uh, significant Fiend. Mm. Um, she collects rubber ducks. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. See, see you got something else yeah. in common. My husband has a collection of rubber ducks in his office, and he calls them gargoyles, and he puts them way on the top of his bookshelf, looking down at him on his desk, and they protect him. That's wow. His story. It's his story. I would never Fiend. have thought rubber ducks were gargoyles. <laughs> but because they're like... <laughs> 
costumed ducks. Yeah. Rubber ducks in costume or, you know. He just calls them gargoyles. I don't know. Got Speaking one. of significant fiend, they also collect like doll parts for crafting. Oh yes, yes, yes. They, they have, have made some really cool. Oh my god, tub. Yes. They would love that. They make all sorts of creepy little hot thingies out of them. Huh. I've seen these things. Yes. <laughs> but I think we. I think we've kind of beat the Harry Potter horse to the ground. Yes. We're good. Yeah. On that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, just uh, at least one. Other nerd thing that I want to touch on, though. <laughs> touch. I bet you do want to touch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> I had... meant the next topic. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Yes, that too. That too, yes. Um, have either of you ever been to a burlesque show? Yes. No. Oh, they're so good. I want to. Okay, that's got to be a, fu- a, a future date for you and I. Yes, please. A burlesque show. I just need to find one in town. <laughs> right. Uh, well, actually, I believe I know a couple of people that actually make be into that, so I'll see where I can where I can look up. Yay! Good times. Anyway, um, I found something in regards to Dungeons and Dragons and burlesque. Of course, of course, Dungeons and Dancers. <laughs> but let's be <laughs> sp- specific. It's. Belly dancers. Yes, belly dancers. Okay, I know a handful of belly dancers. Yes. Scantily clad, lovely ladies mm-hmm. shaking their everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> and D&D. Yes. So Dungeons and Dancers are going to try to combine a D&D campaign with belly dancing. Okay. Uh, what they are doing, this is now they are located in North Carolina. Boo. Yes, boo for us, but North Carolina is getting a grand thing with this, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you want to go to a belly dancing D&D campaign? Yes. I have a, a belly, I have a dancer that I painted, a dancer mini that I painted. Oh, okay. <laughs> As she dances in front of us listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah. I was thinking it would be great. Just kind of sit there in the middle of a battle. And I take my giant mace and I slam it down onto him. And then he bursts into a billion belly dancers. Yes! (laughs) Wow. And they all dance just for me. (laughs) But did they die dancing? No, of course they didn't die dancing. Did they... Did But the option... Come on. What? But you're supposed to kill the bad guy. Instead, you made it into a thousand belly dancers. Eventually, they're going to dance themselves to death, correct? Is that is that your plan? I mean... Or are you going to be like the Pied Piper and, and lead all the belly dancers I get around? the feeling. <laughs> I get the feeling that he just thought belly dancers and then his mind stopped thinking after that. <laughs> <laughs> you may have a good point right there. That is probably true. I am thinking too logically. Logic. Who logic. does that? Logic and, and D&D don't always coexist. True. Yeah. Please. We're fine. Who needs logic and D&D? Some people need logic and D&D. Okay. So, Lala? Hmm. Do we have a word this episode? We do have a word this episode. What word do we have? Excelsior! 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 All right, do we all know we all know where Excelsior came from? Yes. 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 Listeners, if you know who in the nerd world is very famous for saying Excelsior, when you put in for the word of the week, go ahead and put in who did it. The first person to put it, to put in with that uh, after this episode airs gets a bonus entry. Do they have to be right? Well, yeah, they have to oh, be right. Okay. I mean, it's, loophole. Sorry. They have to. Why would they be wrong? Well, I mean, you know, that's something I might do is just start guessing. <laughs> Excelsior sounds like a mixed bubbly drink. Ooh. And I bet I, it's tasty. And I want one. <laughs> yeah. You want you want a mixed bubbly Excelsior? Yes. <laughs> so we need to get my other partner here and start mixing drinks. That's right. The Bloody Mary Maker. <laughs> yes. Mm. The Bloody Mary Maker. <laughs> yes. Amaze balls. Maze balls indeed. Hey, guess what we have coming up? Um, Monday. <laughs> Besides Monday, 
I know, I know. Do you know? The Luau. The Luau. The Luau. I've never been to the Luau (gasps) before. Oh, it's epically fun. Yay. Don't don't you decorate the Luau. I do decorate the Luau. This year, we have a new theme. (gasps) What is it? Other than the Luau? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, there'll still be all the tiki and, you know, uh, torches and the grass skirts and and the lays. But there's going to be a new section that's going to be different. Oh, can you, can you spoil it or do we have to wait? I don't really want to spoil oh, it. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> you, you have teased Corinne and now made her sad. I know, but I have started on the decorations and they are so stinking cute and you'll have to wait. If you Don't leave early. You have to stay it till night. Okay. That's when they really okay going to spark. Show off. <laughs> I have heard stories about the last luau. All the luau's that I've been to have yeah. been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're not a vetted member and you want to be in the Bakersfield community, in the Bakersfield in. community or surrounding areas, or surrounding areas, and yes. And you want to experience the luau, which is mega fun, tons of food, lots of drinks, lots of pool fun splashing, yes. and cute decorations, then get your butts to the Wicked's or the Munches, get vetted. And then you'll be invited to the home where the luau takes place. What's Shock say about the uh, clothing at the uh, luau? A um, clothing is optional it, inside the yeah, pool area. Right, but he says it's they have a, a lax view of uh, of clothing or right. something like that. I, it's like you don't have to, but you kind of have to outside of that area. Oh yeah, right. You, well, because outside that area, you could be visible to neighbors and. Yeah. Absolutely. Crazy yes. neighbors. Let's not get the cops called on shock, okay? I would not like I would not uh, words. words. I would never want to get the cops called on shock. I was almost a tongue twister. You got it. Almost. Yes, and um if you don't get vetted before the luau, then you will still have time because in October we have our tasting. Yay! And that is going to be huge. It's always a giant success. And it's somewhere new this year, right? It is in a yes, it is new in a big building. Ooh, is yes, it inside? It's indoor, <gasps> private. That's a great idea. Um, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be really great. I don't know how many vendors we have so far, but we always have a huge lineup of lots of things that you can try. So you'll definitely want to get vetted before then mm-hmm. so you can experience that. So You've been in the community for quite some time. I have. Have you been to every tasting? Um, yes. I'm going to... Yes. I'm... Yes, I'm pretty sure I have. Okay. Um, the first tasting was way back a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh... I I like your time frame there. (laughs) Yeah, and we actually used, um... Because I'm a... a, I do parties on the side. Um, we actually used my canopy for the very first one. And it was kind of outside. I opened the garage door, and when you open the garage door, then there's my canopy, which makes the space bigger. And it was, it was really an interesting setup, but it worked, and we had a great time. But now it just gets better and better every year. And how we, many, how many vendors were there the first time? I'm gonna say, 20, 15, 20. Oh, that's not bad. Maybe. Oh wow. Yeah. So this has always been a huge event in this area then? Always a huge event. Always a big um, number, amount of people that come through to try different things, experience different things. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm always excited for it. I know. It's mm-hmm. going to be awesome. Okay. That's, that's my stuff. Super excited. Super, <laughs> super, super excited. Yes. Super, super excited. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get into, since we were talking about the luau and the tasting, let's get into some kink stuff. All right. Yay! All right. Have either of you ever heard the term level chasing? No. I had not heard it either. Okay. Well, I hadn't heard of that specific term before. Uh, it's actually something that was mentioned uh, by Just a Dark Star in our. Wow, what can I think of? Discord. Thank you. (laughs) That was that was the first time I had heard the term. The term. And I had I had an idea of apparently it wasn't exactly what I was thinking, but she said that it could be that as well. Uh, in my mind, what level chasing was is when me as a top, I see somebody. Like 
let's say I'm brand new. This is my first time seeing uh, an event of any sort. And I see Dom of 20 years come in with his sub of however many years. And they go in and he starts off just rough and hard and gets right into it. And she's enjoying it. She's loving it. I want to be, be that. I want to chase that dream. I want to chase that to be just like that dominant. Because you know what? If he can do it, I can do it too. Right. You can do it better. I can do it better. And I can do it by next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Next week and better than him. What do you mean I need experience? Psh, a week worth of experience is fine, right? And that's no. dangerous, I would think. That That is very dangerous. Yeah. Kids, if you're doing this, it's dangerous. Do not, do not think that one week worth of training in anything is going to get you the skills you need. Also, kids, if you're kids, why are you listening to this? Go leave. This is for you. Scarlet Teen. Scarletteen.com. <laughs> um, but, but if I come in as a new top and I see someone doing something, do I, I don't, I can do that. I don't need training, right? I'm pretty sure everybody's had some sort of training. But if I walk in with that attitude that I'm going to be better, bigger, better, and badder than that person I'm watching, I don't need training. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. It, no, that's dangerous. I'm doing it. Don't. No, I'm you're going to hurt. You are going to hurt somebody I'm or gonna yourself. Be bigger and badder and better than anybody in this room. And subs are that way too. Okay. I don't have any limits. I can take it all. Oh, those are dangerous subs. I run away from those. Yeah, we're talking about dangerous doms. We can talk about dangerous subs. <laughs> yeah, well, because you could level up as a sub too, uh-huh, right? Totally. Like, if I, I've never seen you play, but if I watched you, mm-hmm. um, and maybe you really like needles or something, and mm-hmm. I really, really don't like needles, but I want to be as good as you, I might try that, and I it, might pass out. And, like seriously traumatize yourself. And, yeah, that would. But I'm gonna be as good as you, right? I'm gonna be better than you. Well, like, cause like my my booty doesn't bruise, yes, and we found so this, out. this is something that's always bothered me. And there, for a little while, when I first got into the community, I was like, "All right, this is gonna happen. I'm just gonna take it all until we finally get my booty to bruise." And no, my booty doesn't bruise, and it's just something I have to live with. No. Mm. Well, speaking of bruising, that actually kind of leads into our next topic. Well, what what? Does leveling up really mean? What does leveling up really mean? I mean, you said what you thought it was. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean level chasing. Level chasing. <laughs> I was like, leveling, leveling up. up. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, level chasing is actually something that um, I'm going to get, I'm going to kind of leave hanging there for the next time that Just a Dark Star comes on. We, we had that conversation and she said she would love to come back on and give her version of, le- of level chasing. But we're close. We're close. It's a good conversation to have, even if we're not completely on the point. Right. Okay. Because as I was talking to the micromanager here, she was saying that that's a great thing to get out there. You don't have to be what everybody else is. Right. You just have to be yourself and be good for yourself and whoever you're playing with. Right. And just out of curiosity, I Googled leveling, level chasing, and then I put in BDSM. Mm -hmm. And... It gave this list of eight different kinds of submissives. Oh, my goodness. And their levels. What? I'm not going to go into it. I don't necessarily agree with it. But if you're curious to see what I saw, just put in level chasing BDSM and you'll get this list of interesting. Okay, I have to look it up and be every single one of them. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, just, don't be, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Calm down. Please don't be every submissive. That that will not work. No, that won't. Yeah. Actually, what we can do is we can find that article and we put it in our Discord. Yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but we were going to talk about uh, you were gonna marks. Be, marks. Oh yes, I was bringing up the uh, next topic we have, marks. So you say you don't get any marks? Well, I do get marks. Um, I get my I I had my booty uh, welted pretty. Efficiently, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I have no idea what kind of (laughs) distant people would do such a thing to you. It was that other guy, wasn't it? And you. (laughs) (laughs) 
I got I got teamed up on. It was pretty cool. Mm. But um, I love marks, and like other parts of my body will bruise. There are pictures on my fat of my breasts just covered in bruises. And yeah, I, I love marks. Love, love, love. What about you? I like marks. I don't like. I don't think I like enough pain to actually get the marks. Although. Do you like the that way they look? You just don't like the process of getting them. <laughs> exactly. So, but uh, last time we we played, I did get marks because I was in that lovely space, and I just kept saying. Please just hit me more with the paddle. Just more, more, more. And Is that what they call subspace? I was, yes. I oh, was yes. floating and happy. And la I'm, la I, w- I was in La La Land. Yay! <laughs> uh, it was wonderful. And I did have some big, lovely bruises. And I was quite excited and tender when I sat. I, it was very, I was very happy because I don't normally like that enough pain to get bruises. So... So That's did you funny. did you poke them over and over in the days following? I didn't have to poke them. I just had to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, you can't see the smile <laughs> she has right now. You can hear it, but you can't see it. She is. It was lovely. Grinning. Yes, <laughs> grinning. Yes. And me, I enjoy giving bruises. I'm not a, a bruiser myself, but if I'm able to view the aftermath of what I've done. And then poke the aftermath of what I've done. <laughs> it's fun. I enjoy it. I like to I like to joke that submissives the next day we poke our bruises and think about how wonderful it was. And dominants just stretch their arm and remember how wonderful <laughs> it was. Because well, yeah. their arms are so sore. As long as somebody put in the correct amount of work, it can be. Yeah. So as a dom, do you like getting photos of what you did the next day? Oh yeah. Is that a is that a turn on for you? I How does that affect you? Honestly, it's been I cuz I've gotten that before. Mhm. But usually for me it's a matter of I like to have it right in front of me. It's like, "Hey, I did this and this and like I said, the poking helps." <laughs> <laughs> the poking helps. Okay. Cuz like cuz then you get the yeah. You know, the noises that go along with the poking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I honestly don't know anyone personally who loathes marks. I don't know. I no. can't think of one submissive that does not care for marks. So I wonder if that's a thing. It might be. I'm sure it is. Like, I'd... beat me as hard as you can, but don't leave a mark. Let's see. And go. How, right? is that, right? how are you going to do that? I though? don't know. Maybe that's a challenge. Maybe that's yeah. a fun game. Or well, maybe, like, they're... They're okay with the marks, but they'd rather not. They don't like... I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there. Yeah. The only thing I could think of would be having a scene with no actual impact. Yeah. Like, you can do lots of stuff without impact or any anything like that would, would leave, eh, that would leave marks. Like, there's mindfuckery. There's... Um, I'm blanking on everything else. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sensory Objectification. Deprivation. Yeah. Objectification. So, yeah. What did you? What are you? Objectification. Saying? Yeah, objectification. I don't know what that is. Oh, we get um, to educate Lala. Yay! I learn something new every podcast. A lot of times, people lump objectification in with humiliation. Okay. But um, and they can. It's they, they can, can they can be lumped together. But like humiliation could be like you're such a dirty little whore. Nobody. Nobody wants you but me. You're my dirty little slut, you know. You but belong object- to me because you belong I'm the only to me one. because I'm the only. We know that sort of thing. But objectification could be like you're my precious little fuck toy, and I love you so much, and be my footstool. Yes, that makes daddy feel better, you know. Objectification for me or mommy. is or mommy. Yeah, is more of like I'm an object for your use. But I'm a cherished object. Okay. I'm not trash. I'm I'm something that you cherish and care for. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's sweet. Actually. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't I don't do humiliation, but I love object objectification. Yeah. Aww. Aww, that's sweet. <laughs> I, I, I like got all the warm fuzzies. I, I like her reaction to this. <laughs> <laughs> BDSM doesn't always have to be mean, folks. It right? does not. So now uh, I'm sure Heckler will have something else to. Is, is he awake over there? Yes. He gave you a confused <laughs> look. That's all right. Uh, the silent guest, always this guy. Right. Right. Always that guy. Always that guy. He's always in the background. Lurking. Uh, 
Heckling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, doing oh, the finger thing. The evil, the thing. The evil yeah. genius finger thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I was like, whoa. There you go. So do you, do you like marks that, like, do you like to bleed? Um, I've never done a scene where bleeding was the goal, but I'm not opposed to it. I mean, like, with needle play, blood's going to happen. That's not the point. <laughs> That's not why I enjoy needle play, but I'm okay with it happening. Same with knife play. Like, I don't want to do knife play so hard that, like, yes, make me bleed. But when you're playing with knives, sometimes blood happens. Yeah. Blood happens. So I'm okay with blood, but um, that's generally not my goal. Okay. I, I don't think I would like it. Where's your favorite spot to have marks? Um, probably my tits. Okay. Why is that? Um, because they mark up really, really well. And because it's easy to just, like, poke at it during the day. <laughs> Inconspicuously. Yeah. But, but the listeners can't and see I can, she's poking her boobs. Totally. There's no marks on them right now. I'm just wishful thinking. But, um, and also I can see them. Like, when I have, like, when I had those welts on my butt, I loved them. And I would feel them all day long. But I can't see them because... I don't bend that way. Most humans do not. Yeah. I don't bend that way. So I couldn't see him. And that's always kind of like, you know, whether I was here with you or with my other partner, I'm like, are they still there? Are they still there? Take a picture. Are they still there? You know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They're still there. Well, they were still there. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're still there now. I need yeah. new ones. Hmm. Uh, we'll work on that. Okay. <laughs> do you have a favorite place that you like to leave? To mark up? Yeah. Uh, as far as me, usually, but... Because it's what most people put push. Uh, it is what most women put first <laughs> to be hit. <laughs> okay. So it's like, oh, okay, I can work on that. Yeah. Honestly, as far as marks go, I like uh, the marks that my little fucker makes. <laughs> <laughs> what was that growl for? Because little fucker. Grr. Because it's easy. I actually, I, I gained a new appreciation for Little Fucker last time. And I would like to say that Little Fucker hurts about as much as the Dragon Tail. Oh. Yeah. I w because with that, I can at least try to make some sort of a quote unquote design with it. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hashtag marks. <laughs> next time, the goal for next time. All right. All right. We'll do it. Ouch. If you can take it. Yeah, we'll see. That we'll gave see. me goosebumps thinking about that. Because I've just played with it, like, on my own self. Yeah. But to have someone else do it, I don't think I could handle it. Ah. I, w I had to be really, really subby. I had to be really spacey in order to use Little Fucker. Yeah, we had to uh, we had to work on you for a while before uh, we got to that. Why don't you describe what the Little Fucker is for the listeners who don't uh, have any idea what we're talking about? Uh, this is true. It's a uh, carbon fiber rod. It's a very thin, very... I, mm. Flexible? Flexible, yes, but I was going to say small at first, but it's not really small. It it may that's, be the smallest tool in your toy bag, but... It's maybe, what, eight inches long? Yeah. And it's probably, what, a sixteenth of an inch wide, maybe? If that. If that. But it's very flexible, and it's got a uh, head on the end, which can be changed. I've seen designs for some, but mostly it's just like a, just a little knotted end on, on it. And Yours has like a little rubber antenna top looking thing, yeah. Right, and then you pull it back, pull it back, pull it back, watch it bend, and then let it go. And that pain, it hits, and that first half a second, you feel nothing. It's like, what was that? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> I have seen people try to take it. I have seen big, donly, manly men be like, all right, let's do it. And then, like, they can hold their composure for about three seconds and then they're no rubbing it out <laughs> yeah yeah it hurts when i first got the thing i had the uh vendor i'm like huh what is this let me would you mind trying it on me he's like sure <laughs> like okay oh that's not so oh my what the, f <laughs> what the fuck is this <laughs> yes. so i learned something uh last week um i went to have my tattoo worked on and uh, the artist was telling me that women have a much higher pain tolerance than men. And oftentimes men will come in and they're like, yeah, I want this piece. And they'll bring in this big piece that they want done. And they're like, okay, they get it all dread, 
you know, sketched out and drawn on the body. And then they, all right, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Let's do it. And the first little line that they do, the guy goes, oh, I'm out. Nope, can't handle it. I can't imagine doing that. That really? was so embarrassing. Yeah. Yes. He said, oh men, gosh. women never walk away. It's always the men. Yeah. Interesting. So maybe the little fucker is just too much for you, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're saying. So what you're saying is you would like to have it used on you more. No. No, because. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she looked back over to Heckler and he was mm-hmm. like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that was a good time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, now I'm just thinking of hitting you with the, with the little fucker and the many, many. Are we, are we always that will come to follow? <laughs> there would be a lot. I probably would say a bad word. You would actually hear me say a bad word. You? Okay. A bad word? That's Never. True. Yeah, by might. Mm-hmm. All right, you know, Lala, hmm. I think we reached the point that the listeners really come here for the drop pickup. The oh, drop yes. pickup, yes. Okay, so I'm obviously going to be reading the creeper part, unless you two ladies want to do it. Ooh, okay. Which one of you is going to be the creeper, though? I, I feel like you're more of an actress than I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do the creeper part. I'm happy to do that. Um, get this. All right. And okay. this particular drop pickup came from Akitan. Hi, Aki. Hope you're enjoying your move. Hello, hello. All righty. Here we go. Oh, wow. How are you? Would you be open to getting to know each other and friendship? Please pass by my page to read a bit about me. Could I ask you some questions to know you more? Hope to hear from you. Smiley face. Hello. Nice to meet you. What questions were you wanting to ask? Here are the first five questions I would like you to answer. Please try to give me lots of details and long answers. And also, please keep the question numbers. One, how tall are you? Two, how much do you weigh? Three, what size shoe do you wear? Four, what is your personality like? Five, what do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? Um, number one, tallest female in my family. Number two, eh, like a small house. Number three, I don't know. Shoes are just kind of around. Number four, I've never talked to my personality. I'm not sure how it's like. Number five, I think those are in my profile. Aw, the biting sarcasm. Ha ha. Thanks for your time. Sorry if I wasted it. Do take care. (laughs) (laughs) Do take care. At least he got the hint. I mean, that's a good thing to do, right? Yeah. Like, why would you even think to ask how much do you wear? I mean, weigh. <laughs> how much what, do you wear? <laughs> what what size shoe do you have? Like, maybe he's trying to be a sugar daddy. I don't know. Well, it does uh, say he's a daddy. Generally speaking, those sort of questions usually meet lead me to believe they want a petite oh. or a really big. Oh. Like one or the other. Though I do like her response for, I've never talked to my personality. <laughs> yes, that was clever. Yes. Uh, and the fact that she, basically, everything's in my profile. Read my freaking profile. Right? Like, nobody reads profiles. They don't. They I really do. don't. I, I do. I make a honest attempt to make sure I read a profile before I send any sort of message. I get so many random friend requests. Yeah. And I always go and look at their profile to see if... They're even like in a person, the... right? Yeah, yeah. I added another drop pickup in the Discord today too, and then a friend of mine asked me to help her vet someone today. Oi, this dude. He is first looking for someone to do a consensual non-consent scene with. Big red flag that he's out hunting for someone who wants to do this. 
And then he told my friend that he's been in the, he's a well-respected member of the community. I'm not friends with any of his friends. You, that, was Neither that the, are you. I was, was that the one you sent uh-huh. me? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Like, if Captain's not friends with you, <laughs> then you're not a well-respected member of the community. Right. And I saw that picture, too, and I didn't look vaguely familiar, but I don't know yeah. him. And his profile's been up for eight months. Well, that doesn't make you a long-standing right. member. Right. So I told my friend to run away as fast as he can. <laughs> long-standing what? I am a long... <laughs> I have been vetted in this community for as long as I can remember, eight months ago. Right. <laughs> Right. Hmm. Well, hopefully your friend takes your advice to run. I'm wondering if we should start adding profiles to the dropped pickups. No. 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 Oh, not that'd profiles. Be fun too. Because we don't want to out people like yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That would be outing them, and that's not what this podcast is okay, about. Okay. What if we added about me sections? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Okay. Some, well, I'm not saying no, but I'm just thinking. How horrible would that be? Well, no, because most of the most of the about me's would be blank, <laughs> right? Yeah, following, 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 following. Here's Nothing. A fetish list as long as my arm and a picture of my penis. That's my penis. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect response. Yes, yes. she almost choked <laughs> <laughs> on your penis. Oh. <laughs> That well, was good. That might no, be a good place to end. That was a, that was a, that was a perfect finish. on Lala's penis. <laughs> New fetish. New fetish. Yeah, there yes. we go. Choking on Lala's penis. Right, I love it. Pour it in fetishes and add it. Yes, totally. Gotham Press will be into choking on Lala's. Lala's penis. I love it. <laughs> on, on micromanage Lala's penis. <laughs> I mean, you have a brand now, micromanager. You have to get it out there. I know. Yeah. Uh, so, with it, any final thoughts, uh, Choker? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I think we're good. <laughs> what about you, Micromanager? Collect things that you love, even if that's butt plugs. Yeah. Yeah. Do you collect butt plugs? I, have a, I, I do have, I have. I'm going to say we. We. Have a good collection of butt plugs. I have recently started building a. Good selection of butt plugs as well. Yeah. The candy heart ones. Have you seen those? No. They're little conversation hearts on the end. Shut up. Yes. And it says like, be mine and fuck me and spank me. (gasps) They're great. (laughs) That's cute. Yeah. Like, right? Your dom could say, hey, put a butt plug in and let me see what mood you're in. Right? Oh, mood butt plugs. (laughs) (laughs) It changes color in the mood you're in. (laughs) Yes. Green for horny. And <laughs> oh, wow. And blue for horny and purple for horny. <laughs> hey, that was really good. And horny well, for you. horny. <laughs> okay, yes. Collect all the things and um, check out uh, the the Wizards Unite. Yes. And, and do it. It's fun. I, ca- I keep wanting to say Wizards Untie, but <laughs> it's not Wizards Untie. <laughs> Unite. Unite. Right. You never want to untie Are you Get it right. having a dyslexic moment with that game? No, I'm having uh, my mind go straight to kinky stuff now. <laughs> I don't know when it happened, how it happened, but now that's just how it is. About 30 years ago. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nobody asked you, Heckler. <laughs> All right. Awesome. What are your final thoughts? Honestly, I'm at the table with two lovely women. What, what else can I have? <laughs> Aww. There's a lot of things you could have. You could have my penis in your mouth. <laughs> You can choke on it. I'd, yeah. I'd rather not have either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> With that, listeners, thanks for coming back to listen to the Gotham Press. We enjoyed having you. Uh, as always, don't break your toys. You want them to come back for more. And with that, we are out. Hasta la bye-bye. <laughs> Take my penis.